Hey guys, welcome to um, Metamorphic Rocks. That's what we're starting this week. We're going to be doing uh, metamorphosis, the process, and then we're going to be talking about different types of metamorphic rocks in the next two videos. Please make sure that you have your Earth Science Reference Table at hand. You're going to be using the charts that we've been using, or the pages I should say, um, and we're also going to be using page three, which is the map of New York State. So make sure you have your reference table, make sure you can highlight it, you can write on it, and you can do what you need to do because that will make your lives a little bit easier. All right, on to metamorphic rocks. All right, guys, so if we're going to talk about metamorphic rocks, we have to talk about where they are on this rock cycle chart and how we actually get there. So if you're looking here, right here we are on the chart that's on page six. It's in the upper left-hand corner of page six of your reference table. And we're talking about the process that we're going to use to get to this rock, this type of rock, I should say. And if you look, you see you can get to this from anywhere. You can get to this from a sedimentary rock, you can go down this way. You can get to this from an igneous rock, you can just kind of hook your way over that way. And you can see it, you can even double over and loop back into here. And what we're talking about when we're talking about the metamorphic process is what we call metamorphosis. Now metamorphosis is the process by which you change from one rock type into another. So from here to here. Okay, and you see the word right here, metamorphism. That's the process of the actual change. That's the actual changing from one rock type to another. You see the word again right here. This is a really, really important word that we're going to be talking about a lot. All right, so what is this metamorphism? Well, basically the definition is it's a process that leads to changes in either the mineral content, which are the actual minerals, so your feldspars versus your quartz versus your olivine, stuff we talked about earlier in the year, the texture, which is basically the size of the crystals and the crystal arrangement, or sometimes even the very chemicals that are in the rock. So atoms themselves will migrate in or out, be taken out, okay? Now, when does this happen? This happens when you have a rock that exists, what we call a pre-existing rock or a mother rock, okay? And that rock is put under new conditions. Now, typically these new conditions are gonna involve temperature and pressure, usually increased pressure and increased temperature. And what happens is when you do this, you cause the rock to change. But the important part to pay attention to all this is that the rock has to stay solid. If the rock melts, if it goes through that phase change that we talked about earlier in the year, that is not metamorphism. What is that? That you're turning into magma and then you'll be an igneous rock. So the important thing to remember with metamorphosis is that the rock has to stay solid. But what can happen is your rock can dramatically change. So for example, if you're looking at the picture in, the, in front of you right now, you'll see a rock that has two very different layers in it. Now you'd go, oh, this is two different layers. No, that's not two layers. That's actually one rock, but part of it was subjected to extreme heat and it changed the way it looked. You see how in one of them, you have the crystals that are just very small and sprinkled all over kind of giving a salt and pepper appearance whereas in the top and the lower right corner you see that the mineral grains have gotten arranged more they're kind of starting to line up a little bit more this would be an example of what we call contact metamorphism this rock would demonstrate that so here you actually see the parent or the mother rock and the metamorphic rock now metamorphosis can happen because of a whole bunch of different things okay you can take a rock and you can bury it deep down underneath the ground you can subject it to magma magma can rise up you can get an intrusion and that can happen you can get plates slamming into each other you see all these things on the picture in, in front of you all the different ways that a rock could be put under these extreme conditions and therefore start the process of metamorphosis all right so what are the causes of metamorphism heat pressure and chemically active fluids we'll talk about what each one of these means in a second. So the first one we're going to talk about is heat. When you add heat, we talked about this when we did specific heat. Remember, heat is adding thermal energy. When you add heat to a rock, you're going to change the temperature, obviously, of that rock. And what happens in that side that rock is the molecules and the atoms start behaving differently. Now, like we talked about, different substances have different specific heats. Some can take more, some can take less. Okay. And so what's going to start to happen is inside the rock, you actually get this process of recrystallization. What that basically means is that old crystals break down, but new ones start to form. This kind of can cause also the rock to become slightly chemically unstable. Doesn't mean it's going to blow up. It just means that the structure that was there before in the sandstone or the granite or the obsidian is now going to be different. So whereas before we kind of had an idea what was going on, while this process is going, the chemistry inside is going to be a little bit more volatile. It's going to change a little bit more. 
okay and this can lead to various different types of rocks and things like that forming now this heat can be applied from various different things the most common thing is the deeper down you go we talked about this we saw the chart in the reference table the deeper you go inside the earth the hotter it's going to get so if you have rocks that are sitting on a plate and that plate is getting subducted which means it gets pushed underneath another plate like you see in the picture above you okay the rocks are going to get hotter and hotter and hotter and so that's going to lead to it in the middle of the picture you see the big blobs of magma these would be intrusions of magma well the rocks around those intrusions of magma are going to be subjected to new heat conditions those new heat conditions are going to obviously cause metamorphosis and then all the way on the right hand side is just burying of sediments the deeper and deeper and deeper you bury your sediments we talked about this a little bit with sedimentary formation the hotter it's going to get but sometimes it can get so hot that those sedimentary rocks will actually start to change into something else all right, so the second cause of metamorphism is pressure. And there's actually two types. There's what we call confining pressure, and there's what we call directed pressure. Now, confining pressure is relatively easy. Basically, as you bury something, it's going to experience more and more pressure. But the thing about confining pressure is that it's even on all sides. Okay, so there's no more to the right or to the left or the top or the bottom. It's the same. So the mineral grains get compressed, but not in an immense way. Why? Because the pressure is completely even, so nothing can get kind of compressed too much. So if you're looking at the picture, you see the undeformed strata picture in the upper right hand corner with the small blue arrows. Strata is just a fancy way of saying layers in geology. And you see in the lower left hand corner, you right next to where it says confining pressure, you see how the layers have gotten kind of smushed down. They're not as thick anymore. Why? Because it's been put under confining pressure. That's why the blue arrows are so much bigger. Okay. The second type of pressure is what we call directed pressure. And directed pressure usually happens at plate boundaries. And the reason it's called directed pressure is because it goes in a certain direction. So the rock is squished. The easiest way I can kind of explain this is think of toothpaste. When you squeeze the toothpaste tube, you apply pressure on either side of that tube. And so what happens? The toothpaste inside gets deformed. Okay, It thins out. The tube itself gets thinner in the direction that you're squeezing it. Okay? But the toothpaste itself gets pushed up and down, so it elongates perpendicular to those directions. That's what we call directed pressure. When you do this to a rock, the same thing is going to happen. The rock is going to thin the way you applied the pressure, and it's going to stretch out in the way that the pressure is not applied to the perpendicular direction. This causes a deformation of rocks, which we call foliation. Okay, And what happens in foliation... Okay, is basically the strata get really, really deformed and bent and twisted like you see in the picture before you. Okay, you see the undeformed strata in the right hand corner and then the directed pressure, which is the two big red arrows, get applied and you see how squished and bent and twisted. This is usually what we think of when we think of a metamorphic rock. It looks like it's been through hell, it's been tortured because effectively it has. Okay, and you can see in this picture here how this used to be a sample of conglomerate and it had nice round pebbles and the pebbles have gotten stretched out. So if you're looking at this picture, you should be able to tell me which way was the pressure applied. The pressure was applied where? From the top and the bottom or from the left and the right? From the top and the bottom. So you can see that it was squished from the top and the bottom and then the rocks themselves, the little conglomerate pebbles, stretched out and elongated out perpendicular to that. Okay, so back to that concept of foliation, and it's a little technical, but basically what ends up happening is when you apply the pressure to the rock, the minerals start to align themselves, they start to arrange themselves. Instead of being randomly sc scattered all over the place, okay, they're going to tend to rotate and try to line up, okay, but not line up in a nice, neat way like you see in... Uh, sedimentary rock this is going to be much more of the tortured look so if you're just looking at the background of the slides you've seen this okay if you look at the picture that's in front of you you see before metamorphism you had the middle or grain scattered all over the place if you look at the rock below it kind of has that salt and pepper look when you put it through metamorphism and you can see it was directed so you see how the bluer arrows are bigger to the left and to the right and much smaller to the top and the bottom you see how the lines have started to line up and if you look at the rock below you can see how it kind of has this zebra stripe appearance but it's different than a sedimentary rock in that the stripes aren't continuous they're not like the nice neat layers that you see in a sedimentary rock all right on to the last thing which is the chemically active fluids now i know this sounds really technical and wordy but it's really not that hard basically what we're talking about is water and other liquids but primarily water when you have water in a rock Water is this natural solvent and it easily dissolves things and it allows ions, remember we talked about this before, 
okay, to exchange between different compounds and things like that. And so what can actually happen is you can actually change the chemical structure of this. Also, when you pressurize something and you heat it, you tend to push the water out. A lot of minerals tend to have water molecules that kind of cling into them. When you push that water molecule out, you're going to change the chemical structure. Okay. And then sometimes the water itself can change a mineral, can cause a mineral to change. Okay. And you can turn things like um, mafic minerals into minerals like chlorite and things like that. So basically, when we're talking about chemically active circulating fluids, we're just talking about water that can easily cause the different ions to shift and change and move. All right, guys, so there are two types of metamorphism. The first type is called contact metamorphism. And what contact metamorphism basically means is you have a magma intrusion that comes in contact. It physically touches the rocks around it. So what happens? You get magma that works its way up through a tiny little crack and melts an area around it. Now, the rock that it melts, that doesn't go through metamorphism. But the rock that's just above it, that's not actually touching the magma itself, what's going to happen? It's going to get subjected to a large amount of heat. Effectively, what happens is the rocks around the magma are going to bake. And as those rocks bake, they create an area of metamorphic rock that we call an aureole. Okay? And if you see the picture here, you have this magma chamber and the rock around it is called the host rock. It's the rock that was there before and it's now hosting the magma like a hosting a person hosting a party has guests the magma is a guest in this case and the magma is going to heat up some of that host rock which is why you see it as this purplish color and it's going to cause it to change okay and it's going to cause it to metamorphize now eventually that magma is going to cool off and turn into an igneous rock that forms below the ground which we call a intrusion okay an intrusive rock something like granite or gabbro or something like that depending on the what was in the magma and you're going to get this igneous pluton surrounded by a metamorphic aureole surrounded by host rock on top of it now in the next picture that you see you can actually see one that's been exposed at the top of a mountain you have an igneous pluton of probably something like granite with a roof pendant uh, or a metamorphic aureole basically the dark rock the blacker rock on top used to be a host rock that got metamorphized by the magma that formed that pluton eventually uplift happened and now this which was below the ground is now hundreds of feet or thousands of feet up in the air at the top of a mountain so what you can see in the next picture is the process by which this can happen so you see how you have different host rocks like the shale the limestone the sandstone okay and the magma chamber and that magma chamber is going to cause this shale to turn into something called hornfels the limestone to change into marble the quartz sandstone to turn into quartz site. So that bluish purple thing, that would be the aureole caused by this contact metamorphism. All right, and so the second type of metamorphism is called regional metamorphism. And regional metamorphism is usually gonna happen when you get the Earth's plates slamming into each other, okay? And when the Earth's plates slam into each other, that's a lot of heat, that's a lot of pressure, and that's going to cause a lot of metamorphism. And the closer you are to the place where the actual plates hit, the higher the metamorphism, what we call the higher the grade, the more foliation, the more recrystallization you're going to have. So if you see in the picture here, you have a mountain range forming and that mountain range form right towards the center of the picture. The closer you were to the center of that picture, you see how more dr how dramatic the foliation, how much more of this um, minerals lining up. You can see the nice, which is the mineral happened in the middle is very foliated whereas the slate which is much further away is not nearly as foliated okay so for example the rock that you see here that had looks bent and twisted and you can clearly see that it had a whole lot of pressure and heat added to it is an example of either migmatite or nice we'll talk about those later but this was formed by regional metamorphism this was bent and tortured and obviously was very close to where the plates happened now this is important because a large amount of the rocks in new york state were formed by metamorphism okay if you look at page three of the new york state you will actually see on this chart where it says you get the metamorphosis of rocks. If you look down towards the bottom where it says Cambrian or early Ordovician and places like that, okay, or Taconic sequence, you can see these are areas where we had a lot of regional metamorphism. So New York State has actually had a lot of this.